India has a burgeoning space ecosystem. Earlier, all the activities were with the Indian space agency, ISRO. But now, the non-government entities are also shining. And some also shine at night, like Galaxy, which makes satellites which have capability to see through clouds and have day and night viewing capability. I have with me Mr. Suyash Singh, CEO of Galaxy, and his, he and his whole team have studied at IIT Madras. They are known for many things. Today we are concentrating only on their work on SAR or synthetic aperture imaging and the satellites. So yes, thanks a lot for speaking to me. Thank you, sir. What, what, what is this model of satellite which we see in front of us? So this is a satellite which is called, uh, this is a Drishti mission that is designed by Galaxy. It's a dual sensor satellite which consists of a synthetic aperture radar sensor and also consists of an electro-optical sensor. Now, a dual sensor means what? Meaning you have one for radar imaging and the other is the way we see through our eyes that is optical. Correct. That is correct. correct? Yes. And how many satellites like this exist in the world? In our knowledge, there is no, no satellite which is similar to this one. So you claim world's yes. first hybrid, hybrid SAR plus EO satellite. And you can vouch for that, that Absolutely. that is really correct? Absolutely. In our knowledge, in our public databases that are available, uh, you will not find a similar satellite which has a SAR plus EO on the same platform. Now, what is the capability which the synthetic aperture radar brings for an average user to understand? Like I said, you get day and night viewing yeah. capability, right. but what advantage does it give it to a user? So, I think there are a bunch of capabilities that you can find there. One of the most important capabilities is you can penetrate through clouds. You can do nighttime imaging. You can also understand if there is a particular object which is there in the scene. If it is a metal or if it is a camouflaging, if it is a decoy. So you can get a proper situational awareness despite of a weather condition, despite of nighttime condition also. And if you see the satellite, the way it has been designed, we also have an electro-optical camera with synthetic aperture radar. <clears throat> now that basically allows us to color the SAR imagery so that anyone can understand. Sure. So we are making SAR intuitive by also implementing an electro-optical camera with the same. Sure, otherwise they look inky black, yeah. very very little can be understood other than specialist uh, imagery uh, yeah. people who understand SAR images. Absolutely. And, uh, and India has, uh, ISRO has synthetic aperture radar. They do have. Yes. They do have. And do they put in any cameras on it or it's only synthetic aperture radar? Uh, I think so far we have only put synthetic aperture radar on one satellite. Okay. Yes. And why is it difficult to put two types of imagery on one satellite? I think the fundamental challenges for putting these two sensors on the same satellite is primarily one is an active sensor. So, for example, SAR generates its own signals to capture images. Yeah, it sends a radar image down yes. and then it brings back. Yeah. But if you take about electro-optical camera, it depends on sun to get the imaging. So to synchronize between an active sensor and a passive sensor is not an easy job. And that is where people probably have not attempted it so far. And we have cracked it at some level on aerial platforms that we are where we are doing a lot of demonstration. Yeah, but tell me, how, how if you are doing night imaging, yes. then there is no sunlight available. So Very how do you get the, you will always get, your optical sensor will get a black image or, or, or do you manage to do something there? Wonderful question, sir. I think, now think about AI. When I have all the imaging being done, I have an accurately fused data set that I have captured earlier. Now the next, time when I have nighttime imagery, I will use the reference that I have trained my model on and color that imagery accordingly. So we bring 
that intuitiveness in the SAR imagery to the best accuracy levels that we can. So meaning an earlier captured image of the day yeah. and whatever the adversary is done during the day and is hiding at night, right. Right. you can match the two. Absolutely. So, so essentially it gives our armed forces and yeah. our people who want to do surveillance on our adversaries right. better capability? Absolutely. Now think of uh, four months we have cloudy season, Correct. rainy monsoon, season. All through monsoon. Now four months straight your change detection with an electro-optical imagery is restricted. And an average agriculture user or any other user who is not very sophisticated user in terms of using imagery will not be able to understand the SAR imagery. So for them, this becomes super critical that they have they should get a optical reference of the same SAR image. Correct. That is where this technology becomes very viable for a commercial context. And as you rightly mentioned, very important for the armed forces as well. Absolutely. Now have you flown this on a satellite, your synthetic aperture radar, or are you wanting to flow this? Has Drishti flown? Not yet. So we will, we are just crossed our CDR stage of our satellite meetup. And uh, we will be in the orbit in next one year timeline that I can think of as well. And, and the synthetic aperture radar, the payload which you have made, yeah. is it space grade? Uh, not yet, sir. So. We are making one for satellite, but right now what we have built is for aerial platforms. Okay. So we wanted to test it for the first time because we are making it for the first time out of ISRO and DRDO for the first time ever in, in this country. So let me clarify that for our viewers. When he says making it for the first time, till now all the payloads for synthetic aperture radars were made by the India's Space Agency, Indian Space Research Organization, or the Defense Research and Development Organization, which are mega agencies. And here is a startup which is doing what these mega agencies did, correct? Yeah. And now, have you flown it recently and is there an image which you can show me? Sure, I think we very recently flown our drone sensors, mm -hmm. drone mounted synthetic aperture radar. Okay. And uh, this is one of the images that we got. Which okay, is what does it show and what location is this? So this is uh, this is the, in the southern part of the country. Um, and if you see these imagery, this is a SAR. Okay. This is a synthetic aperture radar imagery with a resolution of 15 centimeters. Okay. And there is an equivalent optical imagery of the same. Wow. Same. Now if you see here, you can clearly identify this warehouse. Yeah. Correct. Which is very, very difficult to get in such kind of imagery. Correct. And, yeah. And, and this is how it looks during daytime. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And this is how the synthetic aperture so radar that gives you. And this is a image captured by a drone at what height? Uh, this is around uh, sub 500 meter height. Sub 500 meter yes. height. Yeah. And is there a, a matched image, a meshed image of both which you have? I, I don't have it right you now. You don't have but it. But yes, that is our innovation that will come together. So we'll match this and this together okay. to make it better. Okay. Now, this kind of image yeah. outside the defense apparatus, yeah. who else can use this? I think the <clears throat> transmission lines, uh, companies who are monitoring transmission lines, uh, people who are into farm management, understanding mm -hmm. the farm boundaries, mm -hmm. the real estate, uh, many other applications are there. And this imagery, apart from its goodness that it can see through clouds and it can do nighttime imaging, is also very accurate. It, it also gives you very accurate geometrical information about the object. For example, this is not a transformed imagery at all. Mm -hmm. So if you see this, particular warehouse the dimension of the warehouse will be very accurate so you can actually understand what is the dimension sure that you have sure. for a particular object to do the object identification and detection sure. beyond this yes one also needs capability for quick revisits yes so are you planning 
a constellation of drishti or what is the future plan definitely we are planning for a constellation of drishti satellites although just to give you an idea constellation wise because we have a combination of sar and eo coming together our constellation requirements are lesser because you need more satellites to revisit more to be lesser ambiguous in your decision making mm -hmm. now this mission helps you remove ambiguities to a larger extent so instead of launching let's say 40 satellites we will have to launch only 10 satellites so our constellations is much more optimized because of the technology that we are building so to answer your question yes for revisit times we need more satellites but we don't need as much as eo itself or we don't need as much as sar itself now are you getting enough support from the indian space research organization to carry forward your experimentation and development absolutely i think in space has been very supportive of uh, the fact to help us do some of the certifications some of the registrations and also you know they've been very open to discuss if we have any particular problem in uh, designing and engineering or the r and d side also and how soon can we see a full fledged launch of the drishti satellite i am hopeful that it should go uh, as early as march next year and what rocket will you use i'm still figuring out sir <laughs> you're still figuring out yeah and i wish it could be the polar satellite launch vehicle if you I get am. an if you get a co passenger on that or wherever it Box. doesn't matter but when you have a satellite like this like you say is uh, first time you have yeah. an optical sensor and a synthetic aperture both Coming together, together. Yeah. and creating an image and giving an image to the user which is very useful right and how large is your team and what is the average age at uh, galaxy i think average is why is we average is around 26 to 27 years wonderful we are 42 members now um uh, around 25% are female members in the team and it's been amazing journey that the freshers are coming together for such big missions and also you know not just the fresher as a team but we also get a lot of advisory from uh, ex isro scientists who have worked in specific areas of the satellite and data processing now how much funding have you been able to gather and and to put your whole constellation up how much more money do you need i think so far we have raised 4 million dollars in total funding in the last uh, roughly 2 years um, further development will tell us more about what we need to gather as funds but more or less i think after the first satellite is in the orbit and we have the right results to show um, there are a lot of government schemes that we can also tap into right so your fundraise is not to truly a uh, measure of your success in general right so it is important to raise money that is required for you to develop technology and put that in space it doesn't mean that you need to raise all the time right so that's our thought has the journey been good rona so far oh, it's been amazing sir <laughs> space is awesome what we have done in our previous life or previous project was transportation this is much more fun <laughs> this is my, as community it's also very fun to interact with different people and i wish you luck for your first satellite sure. your drone based image yeah. looks very nice and this should give a lot of confidence to your fund funders that you have a capability which is unique right. and and uh, very very interesting for both india and abroad because the market is not just india it could be Absolutely. global it's global it's, and that that should give people confidence yeah. thanks a lot for speaking to me thank you so much sir what a pleasure <laughs> absolutely happy hosting you here thank you so that was suyash singh ceo of galaxy drishti is their satellite and probably better than my drishti because we have only optical sensors i also hear smell and taste and touch but synthetic aperture radar i do not have so the satellite may be much better because it can carry
both radars, synthetic aperture radars, and optical imaging. And Galaxy says there is no other company which has both of them on the same platform. India's adversaries in times to come will have to care and worry about a new way of looking into their terrain. But the benefits can be far more. Agriculture, disaster management, so also surveillance. At the Galaxy facility, at the stall in New Delhi, Pallav Bagla.